Hello everybody and welcome to the first lesson in a particularly long series on the history of English law. Now I'm very excited to be doing this series of lessons now and essentially what's going to happen is very similar to the criminal justice system lesson that I released earlier today that this video is going to be an introduction to the history of English law. We will explore what we're talking about, we'll explore the importance, we'll talk about the complexity, we'll outline the scope of this series of videos and then talk about some citations and further reading at the end. And really this is going to be an introduction that is released today in, in the sort of middle of October uh, in preparation for a whole series of these lessons coming out weekly in the new year starting in January 2025. Uh, just as with all of the other videos that are already currently being released, uh, if you are a level two or above member, uh, you have access to these lessons as and when they are put onto the YouTube channel, regardless of whether or not they release later on in the year or not. So that's essentially the introductions out of the way. This lesson specifically, as I said, is going to outline the, the scope of this set of lessons while taking an introduction to the subject of English legal history. And then we will talk about some of the main readings and further readings uh, for this series of videos as well. So let's begin then. Let's begin with this. And, and let's think about the English uh, legal system as uh, from a historical perspective uh, and think about the history of English legal um, uh, uh, system, the English legal system or the history of English legal history. Um, this is sort of like a, a meta historical study, if you will. Um, generally speaking, most historically significant parts of English law as we know it today in terms of their historical development develops out of the common law okay or at least forms as a part of the common law this is why for the most part or at least for the first half of this series of lessons when we look at this really early history we will be concerning ourselves almost exclusively with the development of the common law and the history of the common law as it develops through time we will get on to talking about the increased role of Parliament, the nature of the Constitution and the various different constitutional changes that starts to develop as well um, as we get closer and closer to the present day. This is going to be a history of English law starting really from the Roman period all the way through the Anglo-Saxons, the Norman Conquest, Henry II, all the way through to the Tudors, all the way past the Tudors to the Stuarts and the constitutional revolution that takes place there, all the way to the present day. We're going to finish, in fact, this series of lessons by talking about constitutional reform that has taken place since 1997 with the Labour governments of Tony Blair and Gordon Brown. We might even go a bit further and talk about Brexit and sort of uh, finish at that point. Uh, we'll have to eventually uh, stop because otherwise will just it would go it goes from being a history of English law to just uh, a, a news channel about what's happening in uh, at the current present time in 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 in, in legal history so it's going to be a long series of lessons we're going to be charting what is a good thousand plus year history and generally speaking uh, the history of the common law has a particularly long rich and complex development. OK, its development begins officially where we can say, right, the common law begins in the sort of uh, Angevin Empire of, of, of Henry II. But its procedures and the sort of antecedents of the common law can date as far back as the Roman traditions of the Roman law when when the Romans um, uh, had had taken control of Britain. So we are really talking about quite a long development in terms of its history. Um, the common law itself, if you just want to have a definition for, for, for those of us who are uh, beginning this lesson without thinking about constitutional law or thinking about public and administrative law, at the moment, uh, the common law is just the body of law that has evolved through judicial decisions, through legal precedents. And this is obviously in contrast to statute law, where we have a, a, a piece of legislation that is created. We will get, as time goes on, to looking at statute law in more detail, because essentially as the common law develops, um, we sort of see um, quite a, a strong emphasis on the common law system and the way in which the common law develops over time. But then as time goes on and a, ve a number of um, important events takes place, the Tudor dynasty is a very important event which takes place, um, spe specifically people like Henry VIII were quite important 
important. But then most importantly, we have, of course, the, the reign of the, the Stuart dynasty with, with, Char with James I and Charles I. And we have the sort of overthrowing of monarchy, the establishment of a protectorate, and then we have the restoration of the monarchy, um, all of which culminating in the growth and power of importance of parliament and of course parliament begins to glow, grow as time goes on and then we start to develop from there constitutional principles even though we are going to be talking about magna carta and in from 1215 and we'll talk about um, other things that develop in terms of our constitutional history the way in which we speak about the constitution as we know it today starts to develop after the sort of Stuart period if you if you will um, there are points that happened before but this is the, the sort of um, point at which we see the glorious revolution. We see the sovereignty of parliament be well and truly codified. And then we start to see uh, more development as time goes on. And we'll, I'll talk about that in a minute when we look at the structure of this series of lessons. One of the reasons why the history of English law is so important, is such an important thing to study, is not just because of your understanding of the English legal system as it exists in England and Wales today, which is, I think, a very important thing for you to study. If you're somebody who wants to practice law in the future, uh, there are sort of two modules that I would always recommend anybody do at university studying law uh, that aren't directly to do with the sort of doctrinal legal principles in commercial law or company law or family law or whatever. And that's firstly uh, the history of English law. So you see a development of this sort of historical development from uh, of the system that you are studying and living in at the moment, but also jurisprudence. I think uh, legal philosophy or legal theory is also quite important. But not just because of that is the reason why the history of the English legal system is important, but so too is it important because it forms the foundation of legal systems in a great number of countries. One of the things that we did as part of the British Empire was export a number of these principles, export the ideas of, of, of precedent and the common law and, and all of these different things. And that's why some of the legal systems that we see in the Commonwealth or former colonies of the British Empire have similar traditions and have similar systems and so these ideas aren't just unique to to england and wales they are expanded and extended across the entire world and so that's something that also needs to be taken into consideration when thinking about the history of the english legal system so we know that there are various different sort of inflection points in the history of the English legal system that really does um, lead to a quite major radical development in one direction or another. So you have, of course, the, the Roman occupation of, of Britain. You then have the Anglo-Saxon legal system that begins to develop. And then a huge inflection point is the Norman Conquest in 1066, um, which sees, the, um, which sees the, the, the development of a legal system um, into something known as feudalism. Uh, you also see uh, things like the, the development of the common law under Henry II. You obviously have things like the Magna Carta. You then have things like the Tudor dynasty, like I've said, and then the, the Glorious Revolution. All of these are sort of major inflection points that sees the legal system shift and, and, and go towards one way or another. Okay. So at the time, before the Norman Conquest of 1066, you see that the legal landscape was very fragmented. You have um, what was known as the heptarchy uh, in the Anglo-Saxon period. So a number of um, quite small um, uh, small uh, systems of, of governance um, among, among Britain, including Wessex, Wessex sorry, Northumbria, Mercia. Um, you also had Danelaw as the result of the, the, the Viking... Uh, conquests of, of, of Britain at, at various different stages. And within all of this sort of melting pot of, of different legal landscapes, we see the development of customary laws, um, which would vary from region to region and, and in terms of their application. So this is really what we're not even starting at the, this point here. We're not even starting at the Anglo-Saxon period. We're going to start even further than that um, by talking about the influence of the Roman law and the influence of the Romans being a part of Britain um, and a part of our history. 
So that is the first of the two pre-Norman conquest legal traditions that we're going to explore. And then the second of those is the Anglo-Saxon legal system, the legal system of people like Alfred the Great, people like um, Ethelred the Unready, people like, for example, King Canut will be will be um, will be uh, will be explored, um, uh, Edward the Elder, and uh, all of these different individuals. Uh, and this is really even before England, as we know it today, even existed. Okay, um, you would argue that it was that was King Ethelstan that that was the person who formally unified the Heptarchy into into the English uh, into the system of uh, the country of England that we sort of know of today. So prior to that, we we're not even talking about England at this point okay and that just goes to show the way in which law develops over time that in this kind of way the law is older than the country in which the law comes from if you mean if you will or or, or governs so that's a quite interesting little um, little unique feature of the English legal system We'll then talk about the Norman conquest, the development of feudalism and the sort of the ways in which the legal system existed at that point, um, the criminal law, property law, uh, the way in which inheritance operated at that point. And then we will talk about the development of the common law under the reign of Henry II. So at this point, we're in the sort of 1150 to 1189. And then we will talk about 1215 and the Magna Carta the sort of influence of Magna Carta, what Magna Carta signifies, okay, in terms of the relationship between royalty and and uh, and the rest of us, essentially, and the nobility. And then we will move on to sort of the more broader themes. So there's quite a big gap here that we're talking about up to 1500s, which we'll talk about in sort of broad strokes, the development and expansion of the common law into the 16th century, the creation of the court of chancery, the sort of dual structure of, of legal adjudication with a sort of court of equity on the one hand and the and the legal system on the other, the ways in which equity starts to develop as well over time. Um, there'll be some nice linkages from that to our equity and trust lessons that we've, uh, that we've done in the past. And then we're going to start to think about Parliament, okay? So throughout this entire time, okay, Parliament is 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 sort of under the uh, uh, in the background developing, okay? Parliament develops from around the thirteen hundreds onwards, if you will, and it only really we only really see the the major growth of Parliament sort of in response to and in relation to the Tudor dynasty, and then specifically in relation to the the Stuarts, specifically Charles the First and the relationship and James the First, in fact, the relationship between those two monarchs and Parliament. We'll talk about the modern common law. We'll talk about the Judicature Acts and the fusion debates between equity and the legal system. We'll talk about a little bit uh, internationally, talking about the colonial influence and the exporting of the English legal system. And then we will finally finish on looking at the common law as we know it today. Like I said, going all the way up to the, the development of the constitution up to the end of the new Labour governments in, in, in sort of 2000 and, uh, 2010. So that's really as high as we're going. And so, with this in mind, let's think about the citations of further reading. So, the, there are a couple of um, uh, really, really good, uh, really, really good sources that we can think about here. You've got uh, Jay Baker's uh, Introduction to English Legal History from 2019, one of the best in terms of your sort of early history, sort of medieval um, uh, common law studies, is the formation of the English common law uh, from Jay Hudson. And then you also have uh, one of the main citations for this set of reading, which is a recent book that came out in 2020 um, titled Law, Liberty and the Constitution, A Brief History of the Common Law. Now, what's very interesting here is the H. Potter, um, who who is the author of this book, um, the H actually stands for Harry. So, you're uh, if you if you choose this if you choose this particular um, piece of study, you will be uh, you will be uh, studying English legal history uh, from someone called Harry Potter, which I think is particularly good. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope uh, you I see everybody in the next lesson for for when we talk about uh, some of the Roman traditions and and the development of the Roman law in English legal history. So, bye for now.